in the gospel story that tells about the night that Jesus is born. It says that Mary and Joseph were seeking shelter, but there was no room for them in the inn. Until the innkeeper says that they can have a stable. Now, the innkeeper often gets a bad rap, right? Because really putting a woman who's pregnant into a stable to have a baby. But what if we saw that innkeeper as taking a situation that seems impossible and providing a bit of hope and a place of shelter for someone in need? A, a town that is so overcrowded with people that he makes a spot for this homeless couple. This season of Advent, we're going to have a talk about what it means to make space for the holy to enter in. To do things that are unexpected, that may be seen as outside our comfort zone, but can provide hope to someone. In our scriptures today, one of the things that struck me, if you read uh, the entire passage from Jeremiah and from the Psalms, is that there's this sense in which we are invited into a new story with God. In the Psalm, we're invited to learn. The Psalm says over and over again, teach me your ways. And Jeremiah gives an answer to that request, teach me your ways. When Jeremiah was writing, when he was preaching, when he was talking to the people, he was talking at a time when people had lost all hope. When the world had fallen apart and they were broken and they didn't know how to pick themselves up and put themselves back together. He's talking to them at a time of great hardship. And so in Jeremiah, as in most of the prophets, there are points at which it is doom and gloom, right? Meaning that there are points in which in that book, Jeremiah screams at those who have the ability to change the situation, to do something. He calls those who have the power and the, the means to make people's lives better, to do so. But he also looks at that hurting, broken people. Those people who seem to feel as if there's nothing more for them. And to them, he sends a message of hope, a message of promise. He lets them know that for God, this broken place is not the end of the story. The way the world is right now is not the way it will always be. He promises that something new, something better, something different will happen. When we look around our world today, it seems like every week I could get up here and say to you, this week has been really bad. And I'm being truthful. It's not even as if I had to go out and search for it's been really bad. And that means that all of us are exhausted. We have been running on our flight or fright systems in our body for over 18 months. And that means that we are tired. We are tired because we are in that broken place that Jeremiah is talking about. Because we looked out at the world and they decided on Thanksgiving weekend that they would tell us about the next big trouble in COVID world, right? I mean, they couldn't have waited until Monday to let us know that the next Delta variant is coming, and then they call it Omicron? I mean, it sounds like we're in a science fiction movie, 
right? And yet a part of us gets fearful again. Because, yes, they said they'll shut the airports down. But if it's already made it up to England, then that means it's here somewhere. Because we had already opened up the airports. How do we deal with all of this? And usually when you're preaching the prophets, it is hard for us to understand where they're coming from. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And yet I think this year, the prophets speak to where we're at. They speak to that pain that we're going through and the hope that something could be different. Something will be better. That God is not done with us. That there is more yet that we can do. When I was doing research on this passage this week, one of the authors that I read talked about one of the things that we need to do at the beginning of Advent is to make room, to make space for the holy to come. And so for some of you, that may mean you need to literally clean space out. Like, you've collected a lot of stuff, and it's time to make room in that stuff. To get rid of the stuff that you really haven't used in years. The clothes that you haven't worn because you're never going to get back to that size. <laughs> it's time to make space. But it's also time to make space within ourselves, to let go of those things that are, are not helping with us live in a world that seems so hard right now. And I think one of the practices that maybe we could learn from is in the Eastern tradition, they have a nativity fast, like there's a Lenten fast, meaning that they take time to let go of things that prevent them from drawing closer to the holy. So for some people, this could be food-related, like at Lent. But for others, it could be maybe at this time of year, because we want to draw closer to God, it's time to shut off some of our social media apps. And maybe not turn on any of the news programs that set our blood pressure up really high. Maybe it's time to let them go for the next four weeks. So that we can make room for God to enter. Because one of the things that we have forgotten is that God is calling us into a new world that is better and more incredible than we have allowed. In our passage today, I love that they say that the one who's coming will be, I need to get the exact word because I won't say it right otherwise. Of course, I put it at the bottom of the sheet, right? The Lord um, will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. Now here's what I love about that. The Lord is our righteousness is actually, for me, can be translated, the Lord is our justice. Because righteousness and justice in the Bible are words that the author, the, the translator, decides which one he wants to use. So as they were translating, they decided in this passage we would put righteousness, in this passage we would put justice. But they mean the same thing. That God intends for us to follow the law, and the law will create a world in which everyone has what they need to survive and thrive. That if we follow the law, and for us that's the law of love, if we follow the love, that everyone will have what is needed. And as I was 
reading through the materials this week, one of the stories that it suggested we tell is the story of the writing of a little town of Bethlehem. I don't know how much you know about a little town of Bethlehem, but the author was a bishop in Philadelphia. And one Christmas season, I don't know how he got time off, like you guys are grateful giving me time off, but he had time off on Christmas Eve. <laughs> and he's in Jerusalem. And he's riding a horse with the people around him back across the countryside. And it's, here's what he wrote. Before dark, we rode out of town to the fields where they say the shepherds saw the star. It is a fenced piece of ground with a cave in it in which, strangely enough, they put the shepherds. Somewhere in these fields we rode through, the shepherds must have been. And as we passed, the shepherds were still keeping watch over their flocks or leading them home to the fold. Those are the words he wrote about his trip. And a few years later, he was wanting to write a song for the children. Because Philip Brooks had never been married, but you could often catch him down with the children playing on the ground in his office. And he wrote this verse, which is actually not in almost all the hymnals, that says, where children pure and happy pray to the blessed child, where missing cries, misery cries out to thee, son of the mother mild, where charity stands watching and faith holds wide the door, the dark night wakes, the glory breaks, and Christmas comes once more. This Christmas season, we're going to take a moment to find out where that light shines in. Where we as the church can help that piece of darkness which seems very dark. But in that darkness is when the light is the brightest. And we're going to shine our light in the piece we've chosen to make brighter. And if you look at all the things we have scheduled for December, we've decided to help quite a number of people. We're continuing our feeding programs, making sure that kids here in Hinkley and Big Rock have food to eat. We're offering the possibility of people to come to the church and receive extra food during this Christmas season. We're making the light a bit brighter. We're opening the door so that even though others are in darkness, they can experience the hope we have to give them. Amen. Amen.